Even a man who is pure in heart and says his prayers by night may become a wolf when the wolfbane blooms and the autumn moon is bright. Those words were written by Kurt Siodmak for the 1941 film, The Wolfman. Even though there's never been any definitive proof that werewolves exist, they permeate our culture. And in the summer of 1972, they would capture the imagination of a small town in Northwest Ohio. Join me in this episode of Legends and Tales as we explore the legend of the Defiance Dogman. a human being who at certain times of the year changes into a wolf. You mean runs around on all fours and bites and snaps and bays at the moon? Oh, even worse than that sometimes. So the origins of the werewolf myth aren't exactly 100% clear. There's a couple of different ideas of where the myth actually came from, but one of the most popular ones that I found has to do with Greek mythology. So Lycaon, who was the king of Arcadia, doubted the omniscience of Zeus. So Lycaon, in an effort to test the omniscience of Zeus, would actually kill his own son, cook him up, and serve him to Zeus. So Zeus was wise enough to know what was going on, and in a fit of rage, he would actually curse Lycaon to be in the shape of a wolf and to kill all of his children. Following that, a new ceremony would be started in honor of Zeus, called Lycaea. And this ceremony would involve human sacrifice and lycanthropy, turning into a werewolf. Now, like I said before, that's just one version of one myth that's thought to be at the center of the idea of werewolves. Now, while we don't know 100% for sure where the idea of werewolves came from, we do know that over the centuries, the myth of the werewolf has actually grown. In 14th century France, for instance, Pierre Brigat and Michael Verdun would be burned at the stake for murdering children. Now, the defense that they used was that they were cursed with lycanthropy, and when they transformed into werewolves, they had no control over their actions, and that was when they had actually killed the children, so they shouldn't be held responsible. This, of course, didn't hold up, and they were, in fact, burned at the stake for their crimes. And the idea of werewolves even permeates into modern-day media. Like I mentioned in the opening, the 1941 film The Wolfman was a big film back in the day, and it was actually one that was referenced in the newspapers while I was researching this Legend and Tale video. Now, the most well-known way to kill a werewolf is by using silver. Now, this is usually thought of in the form of silver bullets, but it's not just silver bullets, it could also be a silver knife or really anything that's made of silver. Sightings of strange creatures, including very large wolves, permeate Ohio history. And here in Defiance, Ohio, one such story has people scratching their heads even 50 years later. So Defiance is a small town in northwest Ohio with a population of about 16,000. It hasn't really changed a lot since the early 1970s when the story takes place. So the spot where I'm currently standing right now was once Fort Defiance. It was set up in 1794 by General Anthony Wayne. Now the reason for the fort to be set up was in preparation for the Battle of Fallen Timbers, which was part of the Northwest Indian War. Following that, in 1822, the fort was reorganized and laid out as a town. In 1845, Defiance was named the county seat of Defiance County, and in 1881, it was officially made a city. Now, some real quick fun facts about Defiance, Ohio. Indy 500 winner Sam Horners Jr. was actually born here, as well as 24-time Horseshoe World Champion Alan Francis. So on July 25, 1972, Ted Davis and Tom Jones were working overnight for the N&W Railroad in the rail yards when Ted Davis would have an encounter unlike any he'd ever had before. So in an interview with the Toledo Blade, 
Ted would say, I was connecting an air hose between two cars and was looking down. I saw these huge hairy feet. Then I looked up and he was standing there with a big stick over his shoulder. When I started to say something, he took off for the woods. Now Ted would also say that the creature was six to eight feet tall and when it was running away, it looked like it was running side to side like a caveman in the movies. Now Ted and Tom would also make it a point to say that the creature had appeared during a full moon. Now upon checking, I was able to verify that the moon was in fact full on July 26th, 1972. So it would have looked full to the naked eye for about that week or so between when the sightings happened. Now I did find a brief mention that one employee was struck by a two by four. And depending on where I was looking at, it, it appears it might've been Ted Davis that initially had said that he was struck by the creature, but it's not hundred percent certain and they didn't name any other names. So I can't really validate anything beyond that somebody said that they were struck by a 2x4 by the creature. Now about a week later on July 30th, 1972, Davis and Jones would say that they saw the creature again in the rail yards. This time it was further off in the distance. It was almost in the tree line and it was wearing blue jeans. Now when they spotted it, it wasn't long before it took off running into the wood line and disappeared and they didn't know where it went to. Now another individual who went unnamed stated on that same night he was driving home from work, he worked as a grocery store clerk, and he was driving home and it was about 4 a.m. and he saw something giant and hairy run out in front of his car carrying a 2 by 4 He said it scared him, but it didn't do anything other than stop and then run off. Now though the initial sighting on July 25th had been reported to police, they really hadn't taken it too seriously until these sightings on July 30th. And that's when police started to really kind of dig into this and try to figure out what's going on here. Is there actually somebody running around? But try as they might, they, they couldn't find any suspects. They couldn't find anything at all outside of the reports from these eyewitnesses of these sightings. Now, after the police told the newspapers that they were going to start taking this seriously and treating this as a real case because they were afraid somebody might get hurt, the sightings completely stopped. And ever since that time, there hasn't been a single other sighting. So what was it that Ted Davis and Tom Jones and the third unnamed person saw in 1972 in Defiance, Ohio? Was it actually a werewolf? I think the most likely explanation is ultimately what the community and the police would wind up concluding, that it was somebody in a costume that was just playing a prank on people. Now we don't have enough information to really kind of figure out who it was, and I do find it a little bit odd that in the years since, it's been almost 50 years, and not a single person has ever come forward to say that they were the one pulling the prank or that they knew who was pulling the prank. It, it's kind of weird because normally in situations like that, especially something like this where all these years later, there wouldn't be any jail time, there wouldn't be any consequences. It would actually be kind of be a funny laugh for a lot of people. That, that not a single person has ever come forward to say, yep, it was me, I was having fun, I was playing a prank. The thing that kind of backs up the theory that it's a prank is really in my eyes the fact that after the police said they were starting to take it seriously there wasn't any more sightings it's almost like the person that was doing it was actually aware of the fact that the police were starting to take this seriously worried they might get arrested face some jail time and so they decided hey i'm just going to back off i'm going to stop doing this now and went silent so let me know in the comments down below who or what you think was actually behind the sightings in 1972 of the defiance dogman if you want to pick up some Bearheart Nation merch like this awesome cryptids tee, or if you want to support me on Patreon, both of those will be linked down in the description below. I want to thank you all for watching. Everybody have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. So to test Zeus omniscience, like Lycaon, like, like train coming by at the worst possible time. It's all right. Let it go. Now, Ted would also say that the creature was six to eight. Wow. That voice mark? Well, I think the most likely explanation is that the, whatever what... I think the most likely explanation is ultimately the... Is Join me on this legend of Ohio... <laughs> this legend? Oh.